You're videoing me, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Camo Chef. Today we're at our camp, we're making supper, and we're going to experiment with a hybrid dish. Would like to do a little shout out to my Moroccan daughter-in-law for inspiring, inspiring me to do this. We're going to do a chicken tagine, but instead of using a tagine on the fireplace, we are going to use a cast iron frying pan and a clay pot. Same principle as the tagine, but it's kind of a makeshift tagine that's a little more hardy for the outdoors. I uh, would not recommend doing this if you're backpacking or canoe tripping, but this is definitely something for the cottage or car camping trip or whatever you'd like outside on your barbecue probably. So we're gonna start by warming up the cast iron frying pan. The entire principle is that this will sit over top of the frying pan with the chicken inside. The chicken will be standing upright, almost like the traditional beer can chicken. We have a couple of options here. We could use a beer can to prop the chicken up, with some moisture in it. I have one of these fancy devices for specifically doing this kind of style of a chicken. So we're gonna try that. A word about the clay pot. It's just not a normal clay pot. We did buy a normal clay pot. There's no finish on it. It was dry. There's no painting on it. We took all the stickers off of it. We then treated it like a tagine. When you purchase a clay tagine, you soak it for 24 hours, let it dry for 24 hours, and then oil it. So we soaked this in cold water for 24 hours overnight in a big bin, made sure it was fully submerged, and we let it sit out and dry. It dried really well after a day, and then we coated it with olive oil. We coated it five times. Got a little excessive with it, but that's why you see the finish you do on it. We fully anticipate this to be blackened by the time we're done and be full of chicken juice, but that's okay because this is something we wanted to try, and we're going to try it. Ingredients. I have a whole chicken that I started this morning with some olive oil and five cloves of garlic. That has been marinating all day in my fridge. We brought it out here in a cooler and it looks and smells delicious right now. The other thing we're going to do is dust it with parsley. Unfortunately, our grocery store did not have fresh parsley today. So I am putting dry parsley on as a rub. I'll save some of that for the other side. The secret ingredient to all good chicken tagines is preserved lemons. And again, my Moroccan daughter-in-law has teaching me some culinary magic. These lemons are homemade. I made them at home in a mason jar, cut into wedges, covered with coarse salt, and just shake them every day. Within five days, you have this salty, lemony brine lemons that are preserved and quite delicious when you add them to chicken dishes. That is our ingredients. That's it. I could add an onion to this. Today, we chose not to. I could also add peppers, tomatoes, whatever your fancy is. Depends on the depth of your frying pan though. The lemons themselves, you don't just put them in whole, you slice them up a bit. The little bite-sized chunks. I'm just gonna prepare that and then we'll get the chicken all set up, literally sitting up. So the chicken's gonna stand upright with that cone up its butt. Okay, so principles of cooking on a fire. I'm feeling one, two, three, four, five. We're looking at 350, 325 for temperature right now little operation here. Hopefully this cone fits. This is definitely not the cone of silence off of Maxwell Smart. I'm going to throw some garlic down on the inside too just to help with the aroma and the flavor. Rub everything around really well and do this fancy balancing act that takes a little bit of patience. I'm not going to waste any of this marinade and that smells delicious. You notice too that I'm cleaning my hands after handling chicken and I will wash them shortly as well. At this point, everything I'm touching is going to be cooked with the chicken anyways. So we're going to add a little moisture in the bottom of the pan, probably about two cups of water. 
You could use wine, you could use apple juice, you could use whatever you prefer. I was debating using something like a Five Alive juice drink or not. I'm going to put a few of these lemons on top and some in the water. And I'm going to add a bit of the brine, but I'm going to be careful not to add the seeds. So the brine has salt in it, so I'm not going to salt this chicken too much. I'm going to be very cautious about that. I have a little bit of coarse salt here. I'm just going to put a little on just to be sure, draw out the flavor. And now comes the special part, lining this up. So it's a 12 inch pot and a 12 inch cast iron pan. We're going to let the steam escape, but to control the heat, I have another small cast iron skillet. You could use a ceramic plate just to act as a vent control. We have the chicken on. We are anticipating it'll take about 45 minutes to an hour to cook. I will come back and check on it shortly, probably about every 15 minutes to see how it's doing, see if I have to add a bit more water to it. I probably shouldn't because as the juices of the chicken extract, that water is going to add even more flavor. I do recommend insulated work gloves or really good industrial like oven mitts to handle this pot when you're taking it off. And uh, we'll be back. Welcome back. Still hard at it at camp, cleaning up and keeping an eye on the chicken. It's been on for 35 minutes, working also against Mother Nature. We've had two rain showers in the last 35 minutes. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Here we go, the big reveal. See if this worked or not. So, we have moisture, that's always a good sign. I have insulated work gloves on, but I'm still gonna move quick because this is gonna be hot. Oh, and that's a bad reveal. <laughs> Save the chicken. So, the good news is, we saved the chicken. The bad news is, I need to go get my eyes checked because my perception's off. So far, everything's doing wonderful. We're going to put some more moisture in that pan because I can start to see some of the bottom drippings caramelizing. So about another cup of water. Just going to give this a light stir. Make sure things don't burn on the bottom. And as I'd mentioned earlier, the chicken is basting itself in its own steam as it cooks. The aroma is phenomenal. Everything's going according to plan. I said it'd be about an hour. It's been 35 minutes. We're a little over half. Things are going great. I'm going to put this back on carefully. Plug the hole. And while that's happening, I'm going to boil some water and start the couscous to go with it. Now, unfortunately, I don't have homemade couscous. I just have the stuff you buy at the store and in the bag. So this is a, a large batch of couscous. This is just the water boiling. I've already measured it out two and a quarter, well, two and a half cups, a quarter, a cup and a quarter for every cup of couscous, a cup a quarter water. So there's two and a half cups of water in that pot that I'm going to bring up to a boil. Take it off once it does boil. Stir in the couscous and let it sit for 15 minutes. Fluff it with a fork and we'll have supper ready. Timing is everything. And that chicken smells so good. Okay, we'll be back. Welcome back for the big reveal. So the chicken's been on for a little more than an hour. I'll be a lot more careful this time, I hope. It smells delicious. We lift it straight up. And there we have it. Lovely chicken. You can tell by the cracking of the skin that it's already cooked through. But we'll just take a knife and some tongs to be sure. The juices appear to be running clean. If I was any chef at all, I would have brought my thermometer with me. Very tender, very moist and definitely cooked through. Now for the big taste test. Mm. Very good. You really taste the lemon from the preserved lemons and the, the parsley and garlic. But that 
hint of earthy flavor from the olive oil. Quite delicious. So we're going to take this over to our table and enjoy a big supper together after a hard day working at camp. Whatever you do though, get the fun outside. Thank you.